Hello and welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eam- Eamon Khan. I'm here with Liam Davies, the super bantamweight heading into a four belt collision on July 29th in Telford against Jason Cunningham. Liam, how you doing, sir? Very well. Very well. Good to see you. Not long to, not long to go now, is there? So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Not long to go indeed. Look, you went face to face with Jason a number of weeks back. I want to ask you just uh, plainly, is there that bad blood between you two? Uh, yeah, I think it's got to that point now. Do you know what it was? Obviously, uh, you had Dev um, <laughs> steering the pot. And then I got a private message off him. So uh, Shane's going to smash my head in. And then, yeah, of course, and you don't want anyone to say that. And like you say, you say I, I've said a lot and we both got proved something. So hopefully... He comes for a good fight because I'm prepared for a hard, hard night, and um, I hope he's ready and there's no excuses. I remember previous fights of yours and covering previous fights of yours, and whilst you've never shied away from the verbal side, I can't really remember you giving like this level of back and forth and aggression. Why do you think this side has come out of you? Yeah, because like I say, he's caught me on a bad, bad uh, day, obviously, and I'm. I'm fired up for the fight. It's been a long time since I fought. I believe in myself massively. I train hard and all I want to do is be active. And I I got this fight now lined up with him. And like I said, you know what's funny? If you look back and do like your research, yeah. Two years ago, I boxed Dixon Flores, a guy called Dixon Flores. And he fought Brad Foster that night in Birmingham. And after the fight, I said that I'd have the winner. And I always remember Steffi Ball commenting to me, like, lol. Do you know what I mean? They laughed at me, didn't take me serious. And now um, we're in this position, so we're going to see you as the last laugh, aren't we? Uh, just, just sticking on the, the verbal side of things, do you feel, and I asked the same thing to Jason, do you feel you've got the better of the exchanges of the two heading into the fight, winning that mental war? <laughs> I, I don't really care, do you know what I mean? It's all, it's all tit for tat. Mm-hmm. sticks and stones like words like everything i've said i meant everything i believe that this is my time and um like i just said i was calling the fight out two years ago and i believed i'd beat him then when he's on his good win streak and he's had a good career like i do respect that but we're in for a fight aren't we and he wants to be nasty i can be nasty want to be nice i can be nice but End of the day, you're going to see me on the 29th. I'm going to come to take his head off. And like I say, I hope he does the same, comes with the same attitude because um be in for a good fight, won't we? Yeah, you said that Jason's been in the game for a while. He has been in the game for a while. He's had those ups and downs. He's on that winning streak, like you said. As a fighter and in competition with him, is he a fighter you particularly have been keeping your eye on, like you said, two years ago, and a fighter that you particularly rate to as well? Um, yeah, I believe like he was always ahead of me, wasn't he? The tables are turned now, but he was ahead of me. So yeah, I always knew that one day it would happen, and I was chasing them tiles. Not nothing personal to him, but now it's on. Like we, he said a few things, I've said a few things, and uh, we're going to have a straightener on the 29th. Which, like I said, once all said and done, I'm sure everything be fine. But till then, it, it's on. How do you, how does it how does preparing for someone like Baluta differ to pair, preparing for someone like Jason on the 29th? And it's back to someone like Leach, isn't it? So I fought Leach and then I fought Baluta. So it's all the same, but I, I'm comfortable with Southpaws. I believe, like with anyone, I'm not looking to pick styles or anything. I'm looking to go to the top and whatever challenges come my way, I've got to get through and Jason's next. That's the one I'm focusing on, and it's one I'm very confident in. Like anyone, I, I believe I'll beat anyone in the super bantamweight division. And like I say, these are all just names and numbers, and I will get there. It's just a matter of time. Now, there was a, a sparring story that is contentious from the point that you say it happened. Jason says it never happened, or at least he can't remember it. Let me get your perspective. What, what actually happened in the sparring, Liam? Yeah, so I went down years ago. I, I said it was a shed and then he left. And, but honesty is the policy. What the fuck have I got a lie for? Do you know what I mean? About anything. 
Mm. It was years ago and it, it's irrelevant, but we did spar, yeah. We did spar. Um, I went down and sparred him and Louis Norman. I went with Macaulay Owen and one of my old amateur coaches at the time, Davey Rubb. And he might be an English champion or something then. And I was like amateur. So, yeah, I think we only done, I done like three rounds of each, something like that. So it was next to nothing, but it happened. And like I said, I don't think he does remember, but I always know one then. Um, do you know what I mean? And it's one of them. It's been and gone. I've said a bit. It happened, I believe, like I say, from them. I've always been comfortable with South Paws. And uh, I'm going to prove that on the 29th once again, why I am number one and why I should be the one being pushed. Because, like I said before the interview went live, I ain't got a massive social media. I ain't chasing fame. I just want to be fighting. I've told George I want to be active. Do you know what I mean? I'm 27 years old and I feel like I'm coming into my prime and it's just about proving it. My last two, obviously, wasn't... I, I've done the 12 rounds, which I've got the T-shirt and thingy, but this one I'm really looking to show how much I've improved in in the pocket, out the pocket, my power and... Yeah, the 29th, I'm just excited because I get the chance and opportunity to show everyone why I am number one in Britain. Yeah, you, you said it before the interview and you said it dur during now. And I was just want to look, English, British, European champion. You know, for someone going the traditional route, um, do you feel that you've got that, that, that's something that hardcore boxing fans love? Do you feel you've got that hardcore backing and, and you know, having the hardcore fans keeping the, your name in their mouths? I'm not really bothered about people worldwide, you know what I mean, across the country, because the internet's a load of bullshit in it. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I bite, but I'm learning not to because it's. I don't really bite much. I just play the game back and uh, I giggle right in what I write back, but you're always going to get someone saying something, so I'm not taking my energy towards that anymore. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going to keep doing my thing, chipping away. I sell a lot of tickets. I got a lot of people in my hometown, which like no one could ever like world champions ain't even doing it. Do you know what I mean? So that's a blessing. And um, they're the people I'm looking to keep on my side. And they know me. Most of them have known me through years of friendship and growing up. So as long as no one of them have got a bad words to say about me and I think I'm a good guy. So that's all I focus on. And, like so this is my third headline now so they say about pressure and that but i feel like i'm getting used to it this 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 isn't pressure now this is becoming the norm and like i say my third my third headline on now tnt sports on the 29th of july in my hometown i'm super excited i don't feel no pressure i don't feel anything but excitement and um eagerness to get on with it I'm going to mention a fighter. He's not specifically linked to you, but I wonder, like, the tr the career trajectory that you're on, and if you get there as you plan to do, it will be very similar in that sort of way, and that's Josh Warrington. Not really one for taking much of the spotlight, but built his way kind of through the smaller shows and went that traditional route. Do you kind of, like, look at Josh as someone who, you know, the, the, the way to kind of handle your career and not really, you know, prove it in the ring, I guess, like Josh had done? Yeah, you could say I'm going the same route, but being all honest, I don't really think about or compare to anyone. I'm just doing my own thing, enjoying life, training hard, working hard, and um, trying to reap the rewards from everything I'm putting into the sport and have done for many years. So it's just about focusing on myself, which I do, and um, working hard with my team. So, yeah, it's stopping and thinking about it now yeah he's trained by his dad same as me and he's done that route so yeah hopefully i can be a world champion and then we can compare but i don't want to be any other story than the liam davis and that's uh what i believe i am doing and that's what i'm going to continue to do to the wheels bowler it's a good attitude to have now coming and zoning in on the 29th how do you feel the fight does play out between you and jason uh, I see me winning. It's just I, I see I don't see what he can really do. I can't see him really fighting me. I'd love to stand toe to toe. I believe I'm the stronger guy. I believe my boxing skills better. And um, other than experience, he, he's got nothing on me. But 
I believe I've got enough experience. It's not my first 12 rounder. It's not my first headline. I've been here and done it before and um, age on my side. I'm sharper, I'm fitter. And um, I think it will be a big factor. And like I said, I'm coming to make a statement, not not to because all the bad words you said, this, that and the other, just for myself and to prove to everyone that um, I'm ready for a world title and these big fights that are around the corner. So that's that's what I'm focused on. I'm working hard and motivated. And I'm representing a few um, people from my hometown, my team, my late great granddad who passed away 12 years on the Sunday. And like I said, I will not be going to that um, to see him on that 12 years anniversary with no belt. So I hope Jason's well prepared and uh, we can have a good fight. But either way, I'm going to come out and top and that's that's the end of it. And I do see it going in 12 rounds. I think he'll run and um, when I catch him I think it'll be done Now you get the win over Jason as you plan to do where do you feel that win puts you because in the most respectful of sense and I say this to any fighter at, at, at the level that you're at it's sort of like a big gap between that European level then the world level do you feel it's like more domestic fights and offing before world titles or are you ready to jump Um, I don't think it's going to happen next is it I don't. I don't believe it. If it come, I, I, I'd be there to discuss and take it. Do you know what I mean? Um, you got to dream big and aim for the stars in this life, and that's where success comes. So I'm aiming right for the stars as I can. And but realistically, I don't know if I, I can. When I win this one, I think I got a mandatory for the European, and. Um, Maybe that's a fight that happens, but I don't really pick and chew. I just want to, like I said, keep active, get me a name, keep me active, keep me back out soon. I want another, I want three fights this year. And like I said, whatever comes, comes, I'll take it. So when the world title, I just got to keep winning, keep winning and everything will fall into place. So I'm focused on this one, do the job on this one. Back, back in the gym, focusing on the next one, and uh, when it does come, I, I will be prepared to win the world title because I don't just want to fight for one. I want to be a world champion, and like I said, I want to. Earn, I'm not chasing fame; I'm chasing fortune, and not not just to take the fights for the money, but I'm putting a lot of hard work in, and I want it all to pay off. So, yeah, whatever comes, comes, and I'm going to make sure I'm ready for whoever it is. But the main the main one is Cunningham, and like I said, he's had a lot of experience. I hope people do not see him as finished because I want my respect after it. Is, is Tapales the one that you look at and target and say, look, that's that's the one that fits my style the best? That's, that's my number one next. I'd say Tapales number one. That's my number one. I'd go to Australia um, for Sam Goodman yeah. if I could do that. I'd do uh, fly me to Japan. I'd go to Japan if I if I needed to. And who's your other one? You got Fulton. You got the McCann fight there. But they, it's whatever makes sense. But number one is to Parles, yeah. If I could get that one, that's one I'm very confident I could win. And I think he suits me down to a T, another Southpaw. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Then anything changes in boxing. It's it's a funny old business. So I just want to be active. Whoever it is, I want to be out again soon. Can I just get your thoughts on that um, Ray Sillian versus Sam Goodman fight? Look, a lot of people thought Ray Sillian would, would get the, the business done there, but Sam kind of really announced himself, really, I guess, there in that fight. Yeah, I wasn't really impressed with either of them, though, to be honest. Like, that Liam has a beast on his shorts. I don't think he was a beast at all. But, um, yeah, I wasn't impressed with either of them. I'd, go, I'd fight a Liam. I'd fight anyone. After this, I want someone above me. That's what I want. I want someone in the top 10. Or if i got to defend my European against thing, But I don't get too involved with it because you never know like what goes on behind the scenes and 
what mandatories you get hit with. So it's so whatever makes sense. I'm sure my manager, Errol Johnson, who's the best in Britain, will um, do the right thing for me. So I'm going to run into this one. Bing, bang, bosh. Get the job done. No injuries. Come out. Say to George Warren straight away, what's next? That's my how, plan. How does a fight between yourself and Dennis McCann happen then? Money. <laughs> Big money. Um, yeah, because like I say, other than getting well paid for it, it don't really make sense for me. Do you know what I mean? I've got all the belts. I've got a ranking that's 10 times as... And um, yeah, I'm sure it will happen. Maybe, maybe it's it's just a maybe of when. Sorry, that's 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 the thing. And like I say, money talks. If I can get a good paycheck, I'm sure he'd want a good paycheck. Can make it happen. Another fight, I believe. I'm very confident in, and um, he's got a tough fight on the 18th of August against Baluta, one I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to come through mine. Hopefully he can come through his. It's a big test for him because he's going to get asked a lot of questions. And, um, yeah, we'll see where we can go from there. I want everyone. Everyone. <laughs> I would just want to fight often. That's it. That's all I say to him. I just want to be active and, like say, no injuries, injury-free. And that's that's there's no excuses then for that not to happen. So that's what I'm asking for. And uh, them that ask, receive. Final couple of things for me, Jason. Uh, sorry, Liam, and I'll let you go. I got Jason on my mind because you two are fighting yeah. on the 29th. ninth. Um, anyway, versus Fulton. Uh, what's your thoughts on that fight? Who's who's take? Who's the winner for your eye? Oh, oh you got to go in a way. I'd say he's. He, I'd say in a way. But uh, do you know? I always say when people ask me, like, it's a tough fight. But it's the way I look at it. Do you know when you come up these weights, like he's a monster. Yeah, I agree. He's a beast. But what weight does it get to where the power levels out, everything levels out, like Canelo with Bivol? Mm. Do you know what I mean? How far do you jump until you become level? And um, I think this one we'll see, won't we? If it's going to be, if it's going to be a lot more even because he's flown, flown through everyone at the minute. And I believe Fulton's going to be there to win. So if he's got the power, it opens up doors and. He will take him out, but you can't write Fulton off. I don't rate Fulton that much, to be honest. He's a slip boxer, but I don't see strong. I think he got beat by Brandon Figueroa. Yeah. And, um, yeah, if anyone's perfect for a new way, I think it'll be Fulton because there's no power there, there's no risk, and I do see him stopping him. Uh, final thing I wanted to touch on. Look, you're you're one of the, uh, quite a few to be fair flying the flag for the Midlands area and BCB. Is, uh, it seems like whenever they get the opportunity, the fighters from the area really kind of take their opportunity. W- why do you feel it is that the kind of timing's right now and Midlands is kind of getting the spotlight that it hasn't had in the past? Because BCB have got a great team down the gym, many good coaches. They got the manager that ain't risk scared to risk it all. And he believes in his fighters. We all work hard. We're all in the gym pushing each other. And we turn up and give beat downs. That's what we do at BCB. And it's shown, on it? So, yeah, big up BCB, Arrow Johnson, Paul Mann, and uh, the rest of the team because that's what it's about. We're all in the gym. There's me, there's Zach Parker, Tyler Denny, Bavo. There's a, there's a lot of numerous lads coming up that are working hard in the gym as well and like I say you are what you surround yourself with aren't you and um, we're all pushing each other and bringing the best out of each other well Liam we'll leave it there it's a real pleasure speaking to you thanks for speaking to seconds out I'll be there um, for the fight week and watching the fight between you and Jason very much looking forward to it thank you for speaking to seconds out sir yeah cheers thank you (laughs) 